In our last episode, we had an amazing day as we drove towards Thunder Bay. Our first stop was at We Met Canyon, where we were supposed to see a 100 meter deep canyon. Unfortunately, the weather was not on our side, but the fog made for a very eerie experience. We then stopped at an amethyst mine where we learned all about mining amethysts and also got to mine our own. In this episode, we continue on our drive towards Thunder Bay. All right, we're driving into Thunder Bay. Uh, we're about seven minutes out from our first stop in Thunder Bay, but one thing that we just passed on the highway, I wish we had known it was there, we would have pulled over. Uh, unfortunately, we did not pull over and it's not safe to backtrack. We'd have to turn all the way around. But... I really don't know how we're, if the highway's on the other side, we can't even like, yeah, there's no U-turn. So we're just gonna tell you that it was there <laughs> and you can take our word for it. But um, for those of you who know Terry Fox, uh, he ran along Highway 1 and we just passed his end point on the highway where he ended his run. Uh, it's about two minutes back from where we just were and our actual first stop in Thunder Bay is going to be the Terry Fox uh, Memorial Monument um, where I'm not sure 100% what's there but we're going to get to go read some plaques and see uh, just like a commemorative statue uh, for him. Yep. So pretty cool. turn off for the Terry Fox Monument. It's literally right off of the highway. So keep your eyes peeled for the signs. There's a bunch of them. Here we are at the actual monument for Terry Fox. He's a bit of a personal hero of mine. Uh, the first city that I lived in when we first moved here was Port Coquitlam, which is uh, Terry Fox's hometown. So anything Terry Fox has a lot of meaning for myself. And it's just cool. Like before, uh, you know, like breast cancer research runs and stuff like that, you had Terry Fox who ran almost pretty much halfway across Canada to raise 26 a million dollars approximately with one leg 26 miles a day it's crazy just very inspiring all right Andy has just told me after we started driving now we are taking a small detour because this is the scenic route. This is, so we're going on Hotter Avenue, as the lady told us at the tourism place. And basically it's gonna take us all the way through uh, downtown Thunder Bay, both of them, because it used to be two different cities. Also didn't know that. It'll also take us to a Walmart, which we will need to do uh, go to to restock up on some food and water. So very convenient. Yeah, that's a really good point. The lady did, there was the tourism people, Tourism Thunder Bay was over at the Terry Fox Monument and they gave us some information and some awesome stops that we can stop at along the way if we have time. But Thunder Bay used to be two separate cities. It was the city of Arthur and the city of... Port Williams? Port Williams, don't quote us 100% on that. Anyway, they combined to become Thunder Bay. It's kind of like KW. Similar, kind of. Similar. Similar, Similar. yeah. Um, anyway, Thunder Bay is huge. It looks like there's a lot to do. And she was telling us too that a lot of the places to eat in downtown Thunder Bay are mostly local restaurants, like home-owned local restaurants. So lots of really great food. Uh, she gave us a great recommendation for Thai food. It was called- Thai Kitchen. Thai Kitchen. I don't know, we're gonna, I don't think we're gonna stop on our way down because we have lunch that we need to eat from our cooler. 
Ooh, but we're gonna keep that in mind for our way home because we've heard that it's really, 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 really good. So just a heads up. All right, I think we're downtown Thunder Bay in the business district is what the sign told us. <laughs> we did pass Thai Kitchen. We can confirm it's here. It has a big orange sign. We, however, are heading to Walmart. Train. Canadian Pacific, it said. Look at that. We are five minutes out from Kakabaka Falls Provincial Park. We are not sleeping there. I think I may have said this earlier. I really cannot remember. We are just going for day use. And it's perfect because here in Ontario for at least this summer, I don't know if they're doing this into next year, day use is free from Monday to Thursday, which means we are gonna get into the park. We're gonna get to go for a swim. We're gonna get to shower. We're gonna do some laundry and we don't have to pay for the day use pass. We get to go in just free. But you do still need to book your day use pass. We went online and booked ours in advance just to make sure it doesn't fill up. I don't think this provincial park is gonna fill up, but just to be on the safe side, that's what we did. Um, we've never been to this provincial park, so this will be a first for us, but I'm hoping that the beach is nice and it'll be nice to go for a quick swim because it's quite warm out today and the weather has really cleared up and the sun is shining. And he's just nodding. We're both pretty hungry too. We haven't, all we had today was half a fritter. We need to cook some food. And finally, it's lunchtime. Tia went to get the oil because we forgot. So I'm just gonna start preparing and get eating as soon as possible. Okay, showered at uh, Kakapeka, but we need to wash some clothes. A lot of dirty laundry. So part of van lifing is not having laundry facilities ready. So laundromat is great. Provincial parks have uh, cleaning stations, but we're just gonna wash ours by hand because, we don't, have because we don't have time or coins. So. He has got this. All right, let's see how she knows what she's doing. Oh, putting the bar on the side where her elbow can knock it over. I don't know if that's a pro move there, Tia. Okay, so while Tia is doing all of that, let me tell you about our plans here. The plan here is to wash the load of laundry and then we're just gonna dry it at the campsite that we're gonna be staying at tonight. How we're gonna do that, we'll figure it out, but probably something along the lines of hanging a, um, a rope to hang all this stuff off of, something like that. Um, and then we will, uh, but the other thing that we're going to do is uh, go actually see Kakabeka Falls. 
We haven't seen it yet. It's, uh, it looks pretty good. We saw it on the way in. Um, so we're gonna do a little bit of that and then we will head on to um, Ignace. That is the town that our boondocking site is going to be around for tonight. So that's the plan. And then somewhere along the way, we're probably gonna eat a little bit. We had dinner. Oh, we had uh, dinner, but it wasn't uh, a lot. So we may or may not eat a couple of sandwiches or something tonight when we get there. Everything is sort of up in the air for that, but we do have a two-ish hours, two and a half hour drive ahead of us. That's the plan. All right, laundry duty done. Now let's go do the thing we actually came here to do. See some waterfalls! As we're walking down to the falls, by the way, it's like 50 meters away from the parking lot. This is one of the <laughs> most accessible parks or most accessible attractions. It's boardwalk every step of the way. There is some stairs, so... But there's boardwalk like all around. There's different lookout points, so definitely some options for accessibility. Welcome to Kakabeka Falls. This is the Niagara Falls of the North. I don't know if you can hear me and I'm not gonna explain much more. Giant waterfall, super awesome. Very Check cool. it Check it out. Kakabeka Falls, but we must say goodbye and head to our evening spot. That's two hours away from here. It's near the town of Ignace. Ignace, never even heard of that. No, never even heard, never even heard of that. Wow, never <laughs> even heard of that either. <laughs> but that is where we're going. And Andy is driving again. I don't know why he doesn't want to let me drive. Probably a safety hazard. He thinks I'm a safety hazard. I mean, that's okay. I'm fine with that because it's Monday, which means you guys are expecting a vlog on Wednesday this week. And I know you're not going to see this vlog until way later on, but it doesn't matter. I am going to edit in the van while Andy drives. Yes. It's actually kind of cool being able to do that. And honestly, Northern Ontario is like a van lifing haven. There are so many places that you can sleep over. Lookouts, Walmarts, uh, Crownland, Walmarts, Walmarts. Boondocking, again. Walmarts. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of Walmarts. Like in Thunder Bay, we had cho a choice of three different Walmarts if you wanted to stay there. Anyways, all that uh, all that is to say, it's actually have, it's actually been really great. We've only stayed at campgrounds that we actually wanted to stay at which was one which was <laughs> which was one <laughs> yeah does walmart count as a campground now no. i mean it's got everything it's got washrooms some walmarts even have showers some have gas stations it sells ice it sells wood and all your food i mean no you cannot have a campfire in a walmart parking lot <laughs> hey you know what sometimes there are fire bands and you can't have campfire anyways <laughs> like here kind of like falls here. right now right Anyways, all joking aside, 
if you are going to try to sleep in even just like a normal minivan this might be your uh, this might this might be a place for you like rounding out uh ontario a lot of people say boring i actually found it extremely enjoyable it was pretty fun and there's so many things that we wanted to do that we didn't have time to do so i know i feel like we could spend a whole two weeks just doing ontario and now that now the tagline of our province makes more sense yours, yours to discover discover yes oh okay ontario yours to discover uh yeah i don't know how well you can see this on the camera but these are massive storm clouds but it's not raining yet and we're keeping our fingers crossed that it's not going to rain because i think we're going to go past the storm clouds Rain? I don't know. Or is that bugs? Uh, I don't know, but it, sun, it just suddenly got real dark. Like really five dark. Minutes, yeah, five minutes ago. Really dark and really windy. We're making a very quick pit stop at a very cool monument on the side of the road. We're going to show you in a second. What are we seeing? What are we seeing? What All right, seeing? so we're just looking at an old sign but the sign's pretty cool because it is, we, are, we just crossed the time zone from Easter, uh, EST, Eastern Standard Time, into Central Time, meaning technically we just time traveled. We gained an hour! So this side must say you're entering Eastern time. <laughs> okay, so if you're going back the way we came, you're going back to the time zone we are always in, which is Eastern, but we are going the other direction. So like Andy said, we are now in Central Standard Time. So this is how accurate this, this crossover of time zones is. My phone is in the van, which is on that side of the sign and my watch says it's 713 Andy has his phone here and it says 813 I wonder if you cross the line does it change I think it will you'll probably need to take a it'll probably take a little bit of time I think I think you gotta go more Maybe by the time we get back to the van. Well, your phone just sucks. Well, yours has been sitting in there for a while. True, that's so, true. Who knows? All right, time to get back on the road. I know, but we saved an hour or so. And it stopped raining for the time being. Hey, don't jinx it! <sighs> we are just not having luck with the weather on this drive, yesterday or today. Um, we just got a severe thunderstorm warning on our phones for the area that we are currently driving through and it says to be cautious of heavy downfall, 50 km an hour winds and uh, toonie sized hail. Which that's the one that is uh, worrisome to me. Because of the solar panel. Because of the solar panel. Um, the place where we're supposed to spend tonight is outside of the thunderstorm warning area. Wow, that was a lot of lightning. Holy moly, that's a lot of lightning. Well, anyway. We're barreling directly into that. Um, we are hoping that the storm is not going in the direction that we're going. So even if it, it, we like get hit with it a little bit while we're driving, at least we'll be out of it tonight while we're parked keeping our fingers crossed, but there is a whole lot of lightning going on right now and the sky is very, very, very dark.
Well, we found our spot for the evening. We made it out of the stormy weather. We didn't have too knee sized hail. Thank goodness. One thing we did have to deal with though is we needed to find somewhere to dry our clothes that we washed earlier when we were at Killar no, Kekabeka Falls Provincial Park. Uh, because we didn't have time to stay there and use the dryer. We were gonna hang them outside to dry, but we don't know if the weather is going to hold up all night. So this is the current situation. Stuff drying, stuff drying, t-shirts drying, bathing suits dry. All right, so the fear in a lot of van life situations is uh, moisture building up. So this is obviously not great. However, we do have our fan pulling air out, meaning that moisture will go with it. So hopefully that uh, by, the, by the time morning rolls around, this stuff will be a little drier and we can just kind of deal with it as we go. Okay, we're turning in for the night. <sighs> not a whole lot to say about tonight um pulled in other people pulled in not a bad spot tomorrow the road trip the road part of the trip really kicks in uh six hour five hour drive tomorrow and then the next day is a bit of a doozy we'll, we'll get to uh, that when we get there okay